Hey everybody, John Bernakovich here with All Points Design, that's allpointsdesign.ca, and Neil Bertrando of RT Permaculture. We're here with the Oregon State University course of the Permaculture, Des the Oregon State University Permaculture Design course. There we go. And today we are talking about assignment six. We're talking about microclimate mapping. Why would you map microclimates? Well, as we know from all of the information that you've been taking in and taking a look at the lectures is that every place on a site has a specific type of microclimate. It has an aspect of how much sun it receives. It has an aspect of the temperature. It has an aspect of moisture. It has an aspect of a number of different biotic and abiotic factors. And so this is one element where we're able to start to take a look at the microclimates of all the different sites on your map. Now, one of the things to remember is that we want to see all the microclimate. So everything on your map should have some kind of microclimate labeled. And we're going to show you a couple of examples here today, just to give you a sense of what this might look like. So again, this is an example that's very simple, very to the point, and shows us on each of these what it is. So they didn't do necessarily a legend to show all the different areas, because each of these areas is very specific. Instead, they put a really simple to the point description, hot setting sun in summer, exposed in cold wind and shady in winter, wet in winter, moist in summer, shady exposed in cold winter. All of these are really specific and to the point. Again, this is on top of the base map, so we're always knowing where you are and what's going on. If you are doing drawings uh, and you don't have the ability like this individual does to, to take the, uh, the base map and to draw again on it by taking the base map, photocopying it, and drawing on it. You can use vellum or transparency paper, or you can do it graphically. All of those are available. They have then gone through and done all of the vegetation. So they've taken a look where uh, the flowering cherry is, given us an A, B, the English holly, the C, um, the Dempster Pippin apple, D, the rosemary, E, the rhubarb. They've also given us the Latin name of every single one of the plants. Absolutely want to see that. They also talked about the elements that you might see these types of pieces. So they put all of the different microclimates right after, really giving us a sense that all of these plants are situated in all the different microclimates. Do you have to give us a plant in every single microclimate? No. Is it a good idea? Yes. Why? Because you're starting to see what nature has already allowed or has self-selected that will thrive in these areas. And this gives you a sense of starting to plan your vegetation plantings and design because you're starting to plan by what you see from the mimicry of the site. So that's one of the reasons why the legend and the labeling of different plants is in this assignment. So you can start to see those pieces. Neil, things you wanted to, uh, to add here? I wanna emphasize getting the Latin name of the plant on there, the botanical name, that's critical. Uh, lots of things are called lots of different names and, as common names. So let's let's start learning and practicing using botanical names for all plants. Um, and that will help you in, in the long run in your design as well as in your communication. Uh, <clears throat> uh, second thing I want to kind of riff on the plant locations in the microclimates. The more clear you can be on your description of your microclimate using sun, moisture, temperature, wind, in particular, those four factors are the things I want to see. Um, the more clear and specific you can be on that and then identifying plants within there, the more useful this tool is. Because what I often encourage people to do is travel around their area and look at, look for either similar microclimates to those and what plants are growing in there, or find a plant that you've identified in your site and see what else is growing with it in other locations around your area. And that will quick, quickly give you a whole bunch of ideas about different plant guilds and assemblies that you can use for vegetation on your site. Thanks, Neil. That's great. Uh, we're going to show you another example here. Uh, this is an example of a site that has a lot going on. So they went through and they not only gave us the overview of everything, so the open, the sunny, the shady, the canopy, the open partial, they gave us everything, but they also then pulled each of these areas out. And I really appreciated this. It gave me a sense of all the different elements that were happening within this. 
site, and then also the, the sun sector, the thermal mass where the heat was coming from. So they broke down this big map, which again was a public, uh, it was on the University of New Brunswick. Uh, they broke it down so I could understand it, left the base map, left all the things I'd like to see, the contour lines, they, they used a, their, their scale, um, had all the pieces I'd want to see, but they broke down the map. And I really appreciated this. This was uh, a great job on a really big scale, and that's not an easy thing to do. Neil? Um, I'd like, I, I really like this. I, I'd also like to know a little bit more about some of the terms. Saturated to me is vague. Saturated by what? You know, so, so being really clear with your descriptions, I think, is important. Hmm. Um, it looks like they've got purple dots on here. What are those? I don't see them in the legend. Uh, are those plants? Uh, and then they don't have the, the five plant species identified. Mm -hmm. So, you know, quickly, there's some things that we could look at to, to improve this map and get some more information that both Javin and I can give you feedback on, as well as helps you to develop your observation skills and start to learn more about your site and be able to leverage that information into a design response. So I, I want to also recommend that you take the sector map, the zone map, and the microclimate map, and look at them all together, either overlaying them on each other and or putting them next to each other so you can really get an idea about how these different site analyses are coming together to give you information about the flow of energy and the climate and the flow of human energy through the site. And looking at those three and the different edges that they create will start to give you some really good ideas and starting points for your design response. Great points. Thanks, Neil. Okay, one more to take a look at here. We're gonna take a look again at the public site over in Calgary. So again, lots of pieces that I appreciate about this. Uh, really simple shading, very simple coloration, giving us a good sense about what all of these different areas are, the shady, the sheltered, low spot, no puddle, but another spot has puddling. So giving us a sense of the difference between the two. As we take a look, again, they've put the, um, the species that they decided to, to uh, identify, they put them on different slides. I would much rather, at least in the legend, see that SP means spruce, pop means poplar, HA means hawthorn. I like this level of detail, but, and, and if this has to go on another slide, that's fine. But in terms of one map, if there's something on the map, make sure it's in the legend so we can see it. Neil? Yeah, um, I really like this one. It's a little bit unclear to me that the sign exposed is that big open area. I would, mm -hmm. I would like to see that um, maybe with a different color just so it's really clear because that kind of looks like it's just the gray scale of the map. And then it's like, well, what's most of the site? <laughs> so that, that's a question I have and I have to kind of search for. Um, but, you know, pretty minor uh, critique there. I really encourage you to use the anywhere with water puddles. Make sure you include that in the site, especially if it's there for any period of time. Uh, and if possible, you know, give all these things some more of a time element, like the, the first map that we saw, where it, it described how it is in the winter or the summer. Um, if it's got puddling water from July through September, clarify that or put a question there, puddling water, don't know when. Because one thing that you can use all of these maps for also is uh, to create a tool that allows you to though, then go and further refine your site observations. So this is an initial draft, but it's not the final because likely you only looked at the site for a little bit, you know, maybe a year if you've been there you know, that long, sometimes longer, but in general, it's your first time looking at it from this perspective. So just consider this a draft and then a tool that you can use to clarify and refine your observations. You might find that, oh, this um, area where water puddles is actually much bigger or it's smaller, and you can refine that. You know, Now that you have it on the map, you can go and, and mark that and observe it when water is actually puddling, that sort of thing. Something here that, as Neil was speaking, uh, came very apparent, something that we saw in that other map, and that's what they were trying to, to take a look at from this idea of, the purple circles. They were talking about canopy cover. Now, one thing to see is that that might be the canopy cover of each of these trees. 
However, the shade of each of these trees is probably going to be something as we're seeing over here as well. It's probably gonna be something a little bit more, well, that's probably not true. So we'll just do that. It's kind of hard to do it this way, but maybe something like that. So again, if you're going to be showing that much shade and if you are going to be taking the time to label all of these trees, not a bad idea to start legending it because you start to see those elements and it starts to become very clear, especially because this map um, is from an aerial, photo uh, aerial uh, photograph at a very low sun angle. Uh, you really do get a lot of distortion. So really try and make it as clear as possible what you're, what you're showing us here. Neil, anything else to add before we uh, wrap up? No, I, I think that we've covered it. Okay. Well, folks, thanks again. This was Microclimates of the Oregon State University Permaculture Design Certificate, and we'll see you in the next video.